Hi there. So today I'm back out on the shores of the channel. It's the middle of February and this can often be a great time of year to try and catch a codling. There's been reports of a few fish around. We've got favourable conditions. I mean, it's pouring with rain, but you can't have it all. It's uh, a nice warm southerly wind anyway, and this tends to do wonders for the fishing here in the Bristol Channel. Let's uh, get some baits in the water, see what happens. So I've just had a bite and I wasn't actually looking at the time, but the line had gone slack. And uh, I sort of looked at the rod for a little bit longer and then the tip pulled down. This does actually feel like quite a reasonable fish. I'm not sure if it is a cod, but I'm just gonna keep coaxing it towards the shore. The worst thing you can do in this situation is to stop. I'm thinking this is probably a ray just quite a solid dead weight haven't felt any kind of uh, any knocks yet and it's actually it's gone to ground let's put a little bit of pressure on just hold it there for a second no so the best thing to do even though it's probably counterintuitive is just to give it some slack line with a bit of luck It'll think it's free, it'll swim away and it'll pull itself out of the bottom. Yeah, the fish is still there. He says. Come on. There we go, something's happening. Let's have a look again. There we go, now the fish is moving. So I've just got to keep it up in the up in the water and away from those rocks which as you can see it's not always easy i'm not really sure what this is it is coming around in the, in the tide of it it's gone into the bottom again a bit more slack hope there's a good hook hold there she goes lift her out again keep her moving given that little bit of slack line is so important if you just keep pulling, that's when it can go wrong. So, here we go, what have we got? I think we've got a cod, actually. Yeah, we've got a nice little codling. Beautiful. What a lovely start to the session. Prime Bristol Channel, spring run codling on simple squid bait. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? And you know what? That's going to be my tea tonight. So I'm beginning to think that that first bite was a, a bit of a fluke. It's, uh, well, it's gone half an hour now and the second bait's been out there. I think I'm going to get it in and see what's going on. Now the line has gone a bit slack, but I'm thinking that's just where the, the tide's dropped and we've, we're losing the tide, so. No, there's not a lot on here. Oh, that's the bottom, and we're out of it again. Can't emphasise this enough, though. You've really got to, you've got to keep that gear moving. Once you get it moving, don't stop. Keep winding, keep winding, keep winding. Otherwise, you're going to go straight into the bottom, and that's where it's going to end up. Can't get over how mild it is today, though. It's a really it's a really pleasant day, even the rain's cleared off now. So, here we go. Let's see what's left of the bait. Bit of weed on the lead or not. Just ping that off, that's nice. There we go, whee. It's uh, certainly a bit of crab activity, I'd say. It's certainly been nibbled at. Let's get the next one out. So I've got exactly the same bait again, small whole squid. It's, uh, you know, casts nicely. It's 
quite a potent bait. It seems to attract fish. Let's, uh, let's get it out there. Lovely, that southerly wind really does age your casting distance. And you've got conditions like this, it's so much nicer than having to cast your bait into a headwind, which obviously has the opposite effect and cuts your casting down. It's fantastic to see these spring run fish in such great condition. This one's got a real real belly on her. Probably three, three and a half pound, but you know, the perfect size for eating. Really nice looking fish. So here's another great tip that you may not be familiar with, I'm gonna show you now. If you haven't had a bite for 15 or 20 minutes, get your flask out, okay? Take the lid off, open it up, pour yourself, a hot beverage. Now the second that I attempt to drink this, I bet you I'll have a bite. Let's see what happens. Oh, perhaps it's just wishful thinking, but it does sometimes work. I'll tell you something else. The number of times over the years where you catch that fish on the first cast and you think, oh, we're in for a great day today. And then it just goes totally dead. Why does that happen? Why can it not just be consistent? Uh, fishing just along from me today is my friend John Drury and um, we've fished together for probably the last 20 years or more and we've had some really productive sessions out here. This isn't shaping up to be one of them so far but you know who knows what's going to happen next. Now I just wonder if we've still got a little bit of tide run there. It's coming down to it's coming down to low water now. And it usually, usually you get just a little bit of a trickle there. Just enough to uh, to improve the chances of a codling coming through. That's why I was keen to get a fresh bait out there. The baits have been coming in pretty much okay, but as I say, it is a good time now. Well, could it be any slower? It's, it's just soul destroying when it's like this. I really don't think there's a huge amount of cod left in the Bristol Channel nowadays. Uh, you know, when you compare results to say 20 years ago, there was a hell of a lot more fish around and nowadays people get excited about catching two or three small codling in a session. That's not fishing really. I mean, it's enjoyable enough, but to be able to pick and choose your venue back in the day and just head out to where you wanted and catch a few fish, it seemed to be quite an easy thing to do. Just a hell of a lot harder nowadays. Well, I think I'm actually going to make that my last cast of the day. Hasn't been an especially productive session after that early success on the first cast, but as I said earlier, that's often how it goes. Might come back tomorrow, put a few more hours in, see what happens then. Thanks for watching, see you again.